What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a geometry note effect that lets you instantly animate any string of text to look like it's being handwritten. So I've got a new blend file here. I'm going to hop over into geometry nodes and just add a new modifier to the default cube. I'll slide this over a bit and shift A, I'm going to grab a string to curves node. Just plug that in there, and then I'm going to connect this string input to my group input over here. And now, whatever I type into my string input over here will be output as a bunch of curves that look like text in my blend file. Now, the first thing we need to take care of is this font doesn't look anything like handwriting. So I'll have a link in the description where you can download these, but we're going to go to k40lasercutter.com and download the Tiny Tricks and Fancy King fonts. I'm going to be building the effect around the Fancy King font specifically, but I'll also show you how you can modify it just a little bit in order to have it work for the Tiny Tricks font as well. I highly recommend doing that. It is a little bit more work, just a little bit of repetition you have to do, but the font is very pretty and it gives that nice sort of like Santa's handwriting look, which is really nice coming into the holidays, I think. So once you have those downloaded, just click here on this little file, go to wherever you have stored your new fonts, and install them. Now, as you can see, this looks much more like someone's handwriting. I'll slide over my group output, shift A, and we're gonna have to add in a realize instances node because all of these curves are actually just instances and not real geometry. Next, I'm gonna add in a resample curve node set this to length, and set this value to 0 0.01. It is important to copy the values exactly throughout this because some of the math that we're going to do later will rely on them. Shift A again and add in a delete geometry node. Shift A and grab an index node, a scene time node, and a compare node. Then we'll switch our compare node to integer. Now you can plug your index value into A, and I'm gonna plug the frame value into B. With this set to greater than, we can basically just delete all the geometry that comes after a certain point. And if I plug this in and let this play for a sec, you'll see we're kind of getting this writing effect. Now, if we slide this over again, shift A and add in a curve to mesh, you'll see that gets rid of that sort of connecting line we saw there for a sec. Shift A again, and I'm gonna add in a math node set to multiply and a group input node. And I'll plug in a new value slot into the bottom of our multiply. So now I sort of have a speed controller for the speed of my writing effect. Another thing you'll notice though, is there seems to be like a sharp stop and pause between each of the letters getting written. And the reason for this is that Blender is actually writing each letter twice. It's drawing it forward and then it's drawing it backward. We just don't see the drawing backward because the line already exists. So in order to take care of this, there's actually a really simple solution that took me way too long to figure out. And that is that we can come back to the beginning here just after our realize instances node. Shift A and add in another resample curve. Make sure this one is set to count and set the count value to exactly 300. And now what we can do is add in another delete geometry. And now each curve is gonna have exactly 300 points. So now what we can do is we just have to have a system to tell Blender to delete only the second set of 150 points. And that will delete the sort of drawing back on itself effect. So if you add in an index node and a math node and set this to modulo, plug the index into the top and set the bottom value to 300, slide this over, shift D and switch this to greater than, plug this into here, set this threshold to 150 and plug this value into the selection, shift A again, and add in a curve to mesh just after this resample curve. And as you can see, we now draw our letters continuously, and I think that looks just a whole lot better. 
But now we have to remember to add in a mesh to curve node before our length resampling. So that way we still get the rest of our writing effect working nice and fluidly. Now, the next thing we do have to fix, and there's only four letters that have this issue for the fancy king font, but there's actually several more that have this issue for the tiny tricks. And so this is the thing you're gonna have to do differently for each of them, is that if we look at the letter D here, for example, if I draw this out, you can see the letter D gets drawn basically backward. I mean, maybe some other people draw their Ds that way, but I certainly don't. And so we need to be able to flip only the letter D. And the easiest way that I could figure out to do this at least was to drag our mesh to curve back over here and slide our resample curve over as well. So now we're operating just outside of our length resampling. Shift A and add a reverse curve node. Now you can see we draw every single curve backward, but it also fixes the D. So now we just have to isolate all the letters we want to flip. And so to do that, I'm going to add in a spline length node and a compare node. Now each spline or each letter is going to have a very specific number of points because they each require a certain length of a spline to draw it and we're resampling based on length, so each of them is going to have a very distinct number of points. And thus, we can use this compare node to check if the point count is equal to a very specific number. In the case of D, this number is 79. And that'll let us flip only the letters we want. Now, I'll save you all the time of figuring out which letters need to be flipped and what their values are. So you can just copy the values that I'm using here. So you need to flip all the values of 79, 138, 103, and 105 for the fancy king font. I'll just put a list in the description of all the numbers you're gonna need to use for the tiny tricks font. It is unfortunately a lot longer, but not having to figure it out entirely should make the process a lot easier. Now this last part is of course just making it look pretty. So we're gonna add in a mesh to curve and a curve to mesh. Add in a curve circle. Lower the resolution a bit. You don't really need that much. Plug that into the profile curve, check fill caps and lower this radius way, way down. And then you can add in a set curve radius node Adjust that how you like so you have even more fidelity. Or, one thing I like to do to give it more of a calligraphy look is to add in a spline parameter node and a float curve. Now if you plug this factor into the value slot and this value output into the radius, now you can see we can make it much smaller at the start and thicker at the end and we can adjust these values using our float curve. So I'm gonna go with a shape, something sort of like this. I'll set my points all to auto clamped, so that way there's no overflow I have to worry about. And yeah, I think something like that looks pretty good. And of course, if you want to, you can shift A, add a group input and a math node. Just plug that in there, set it to multiply and plug this value into here. And now you have a writing speed input and a spline thickness input. And of course, at the absolute very end, we can add in a set material node and a group input. So now you can control your material from over here in your viewport shader. And yeah, that is basically the whole effect. It's super quick and easy to set up. And of course, if you want to, you don't have to use a scene time node. You can just use some sort of factor controller if you like. Personally, I like the scene time because I feel like it's nice to have a consistent writing speed. It also is completely compatible with the dynamic paint effect. So if you want to use this as a paintbrush on a canvas of a card, you can do that to write text onto a material. If y'all want to know how to do that, just let me know in the comments and I can post a short that describes how to do that. 
And yeah, that's the end of the tutorial, guys. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, consider doing all that jazz. Comment down below if you have any ideas for future videos. And as always, happy blending, and in this case, happy holidays.